During his brief visit to this region, he visited ASEAN's emerging country, which is Myanmar. He pointed out several challenges Myanmar is experiencing in terms of recent gender inequality and how you and women would encourage women in Kachin states to become peace builders. And on your trip to Southeast Asia this time, you have visited Myanmar as well. Mm. And how was your um, trip to Myanmar? Uh, again, it was, uh, it was not a long time and mm -hmm. it was my first time there. Mm -hmm. So um, I need to caveat what, what I say, say. I mean, I, I think you, uh, you, you can only, I mean, you, to, to really understand a country and a society, mm -hmm. you need to live there a long period of time, which, mm -hmm. which I had the privilege of in Vietnam. But maybe I'll say, would say four or five things. I think in Myanmar has, has, has um, there are some, some, there are some, some good indicators. One is they've achieved, they've, they've achieved the MDG on gender equality. They've, uh, they have parity now in terms of boys and girls enrollment in, in, in primary school. Um, they, they have in place some um, important um, elements, um, but I think they, they face a number of challenges. Mm -hmm. The first one is trying to have much more women uh, um, in terms of leadership positions and political participation. The average in, in, in uh, Myanmar is only 5%. So they have a very famous leader of the opposition, who's mm -hmm. a woman. They have a very, uh, they have a, a strong uh, head of the national assembly, the chair. Uh, uh, so uh, not st not national assembly, sort of strong uh, head of the opposition. Um, but they need to really look at much much greater levels of of, of women parliamentarians. Uh, they have one woman in cabinet, who's the minister of social affairs and women's gender issues and also disaster risk reduction. She's got a huge portfolio. I hope that soon they can have many more mm -hmm. than one, but they really need to, to, to focus on getting much more women in, in, in leadership positions. I think secondly, they, they, they have a, an increasing uh, uh, incidence of HIV, I think second to Thailand in, 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 in the region. And so it's really important that they look at that and, and a large number of uh, new cases are, are, are women and they need to look at the, the, the critical uh, a group of, of women and girls. I think also there, there is an, 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 an issue of, um, um, in terms of the MDGs, they still have a very high rate of maternal mortality, mm -hmm. like many countries, but they really need, need to focus on that. And I think there's not a lot of statistics, there's not a lot of, people don't know enough about what, what the real situation is. Mm -hmm. So as you and women, what, we're, what, we're, what we'll be doing is we'll be working with our partners in the UN, UNFPA and others, to do, uh, we're doing an assessment of, of the situation of women and, and girls in, in Myanmar right now. We're also, we will also soon be helping them uh, with, with all of their laws. You know, they're in quite a transition and mm -hmm. some of their laws are from, you know, what, long time ago, mm -hmm. pre-colonial time even. So we'll, we'll be working with them to make sure that the laws that they have are in conformity with CEDA, which is the Convention for the Elimination of, of, the, of Discrimination Against Women. We'll also be um, working with them in terms of um, when they are ready and helping bring examples of good laws to help uh, fight uh, violence against women so that, mm -hmm. that hopefully soon they'll also have in place uh, a good law like, like Thailand does. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have met with uh, government officials and other parties on this. What were, what were the reactions when um, probably opening up in, in terms of women it being in parliament, in the parliament. I think I, I was I was wasn't there very long, but and I spent uh -huh. some time with the UN there, trying to help the UN country team, also deliver as one, deliver as effectively as possible. But I met some people in the government, some senior advisors to the president, and then I met some women parliamentarians, and I mm -hmm. met some civil society, women's NGOs, and I, I think that they feel you know how, so how they feel strongly how important it is mm -hmm. to increase the number of women. I mean they'll have to wait for the next election. But in the meantime, I hope that they can increase the number of, of women in the cabinet, uh, in senior positions. I think that, the, the, that it's about 32% of women at the level of deputy director, hopefully in the civil service. Hopefully that can go up to 35, 40% more, I hope. So, so I, I think that, that they feel very much that this is, you know, it's a chance to mobilize. Um, I mean, people are excited about the transition and, and what's happening, but I think most people you speak to, everybody says, you know, the transitions, you know, it, there's a new opportunity. However, what's really important is what happens on, on the ground mm -hmm. and that there's not much change yet. And so we need to see the, the situation on the ground in Myanmar uh, improve and particularly for women and girls.
Okay, you, as we know that there's still, you know, violence in the Kachin states and women uh, are tortured and raped and um, how does UN Women going to, you know, solve this problem and what is UN Women doing in engaging women for peace building yeah. in the region? I, th I think that's, that's a very good question. Again, we've, we've, we're not present yet in Myanmar. We have, we, we, we work in Myanmar from our office here in Bangkok, mm -hmm. our regional office. Um, we'll soon be putting in a senior UN official to be advising the resident coordinator and the country team on, on gender equality uh, issues. Um, you know, it's, it's, it'll be up to the, to the parties concerned to, to uh, move beyond ceasefire to sustainable mm -hmm. peace. So that's the government and the various, the various uh, ethnic groups and, and, that, and that discussion. But, but I think it is very important in terms of it, uh, involving women more. I mean, evidence shows that um, well, when, when, when women are, when there's more women parliamentarians and more women leaders, the laws tend to be, there's more laws that focus on social protection, on health, on ed education, on, on, on what I would say progressive social outcomes. When more women are involved in, in, in peace and, when, and a after a peace, when women headed households tend to spend two times more than men on health and education, which is very important in terms of healing mm -hmm. the family, healing communities. So there's, there's a lot of evidence in terms of the important role that women play, but women are almost entirely absent from the peace, peace, peace table, from peacekeeping forces, from as mediators. So one thing we're doing as UN Women actually next week is we're having a training uh, a workshop with 20 women, women mediators mm -hmm. uh, in Myanmar, hopefully to help build their capacity that they can be, they can play an even more active role in terms of trying to forge a sustainable. Regarding the UN's Millennium Development Goals of 2015, UN Women is looking ahead of 2015 and even beyond by laying down strategies to achieve the goals. What are the steps for UN Women to achieve the gender equality by 2015 and the post-2015 goals? Well, I, I think what's really important is that we have three years as an international community until the end of 2015. Many people are focused already in the post-2015, but we have three years to achieve the MDGs now. Mm -hmm. I think uh, MDG 3, which is about gender uh, equality, um, I think we, we need to accelerate that. Mm -hmm. um, we really need to, f to look at the, the MDGs that most really affect women, and I think that's MDG 4 on, on uh, mm -hmm. maternal health, uh, or MDG 5 uh, no, uh, on maternal health. And so we really need to accelerate the, 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 those efforts. But then I think what we need to do now is when we look at the post-2015 is to make sure that we, we are looking at, uh, at the post-2015 from a, a human rights-based approach. Mm -hmm. So look at issues of inequality, including gender inequality, accountability, inclusion. Uh, and so I think it's really important from our point of view that we look at addressing gender inequality through a separate goal in the future but also ensure that all the other goals have, have a very good indicator on, on, on gender. Uh, we're making some good progress on gender equality and women's empowerment, but, but some parts of the world we're going backwards. In the Arab Spring, in, mm. in North Africa, in Afghanistan is very difficult, in the Pacific countries like Papua New Guinea, and still in this region uh, there's only five countries in ASEAN that have over 20 percent women leaders. So mm. that we have a, a lot to focus on a lot to accelerate achievement now, but in particular in the future to really ensure that women are at the center of, of, of what we do post-2015 and that we really try to have an agenda that's transformative that really addresses some of the structural I impediments that really hold women back in the societies but then ultimately hold back much faster and further human development. All right, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much and thank you for this opportunity. All right. And that's all the time today for Tours 2015. You can watch it again every weekday from 3.30 to 4 p.m. on the Nation Channel. For today, thank you for watching us. See you next time. Swadikrab.